Hey y'all, so in this problem we have a, there's a four cylinder, four stroke um, spark ignition gasoline engine and it's, let's assume that it's operating on an ideal auto cycle. It's taking in air at 20 psi and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So 20 psi is a little bit bigger than standard atmosphere 14.7 so there might be a, a turbocharger for example that's, that's increasing the pressure. And it's minim limited to a maximum cycle temperature of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So this might be the flame temperature, for example, when the gasoline burns in the cylinder. And you know each cylinder is a bore of 3 inches and a stroke of 4 inches. And you know the minimum enclosed volume of each piston is only 20% of the maximum enclosed volume. And the question is, how much power will this engine produce when it's operated at 3,500 RPM? Which is pretty typical for cruising down the uh, highway at, a, at a, a fast speed. We know some of the properties of air, let's use uh, ideal gas constant, heat capacities at constant pressure and volume, and then the heat capacity ratio of K. So here is the uh, the ideal auto cycle on a PV diagram. And what I'm drawing is a piston cylinder arrangement in uh, four different steps, the four different uh, phases of the cycle. So we go from point one to point two, which is an adiabatic reversible compression, so it's isentropic compression. And then we go from two to state three in which the uh, gasoline air mixture burns spontaneously and it increases the pressure um, instantaneously between two and three. And then we'll go from uh, points three to four which is an adiabatic reversible uh, expansion, so the isentropic expansion from three to four. And then we'll go from four to one which is a constant volume heat rejection process. So we go from uh, the relatively high temperature at 4 down to a cooler temperature at 1, and that returns us uh, back to the beginning of the cycle. So on a PV diagram, we'd label these four points. We go from 1 to 2, the adiabatic isentropic, uh, well, isentropic compression. From 2 to 3 is when the gasoline burns instantaneously. So it's constant volume. The pressure just shoots up because the temperature increased. And then we go from 3 to 4, this isentropic expansion from 3 to 4. And then heat rejection, uh, heat leaving the system, bringing us back down to state 1. A couple of things we know from the problem is that the maximum uh, temperature will occur at point 3, the piston's all the way up, right when the gasoline uh, burns, and the maximum temperature we're given is 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 3460 Rankine. We also know the inlet conditions. We know the pressure uh, being drawn into the cylinder at point 1 is 20 psi, and we know the temperature is 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 560 Rankine. So we know points, uh, the temperature at uh, point 1. So we know the temperature at this location, uh, point 1 in both cases, the pressure and temperature. Ultimately, what we want to figure out is the amount of work, the net amount of work that this uh, engine did during one complete, uh, one complete thermodynamic cycle. So the uh, work we've got, the work was done uh, as it moves from point 3 to point 4, pushes down on the cylinder and that imposes a, a clockwise torque and then the work comes out of, as a shaft work leaving the system essentially. And the amount of work done between 3 and 4 is greater than the amount of work that the surroundings did on the engine between 1 and 2. So here work is being done on the gas and here between 3 and 4 the gas is doing work on the surroundings. And between 3 and 4 is what we're uh, really interested in for the, uh, the work leaving the engine. So it's the difference between 3 to 4 and 1 to 2 is a net amount of work that was generated. So if we do an energy balance on the system and I'm just drawing a block for the engine just a rectangle. We've got Q, or we've got heat entering the system, so we've got Q in, and heat leaving the system, Q out, and we've got a net amount of work leaving the system. So the energy balance shows that the amount of heat entering the system has to equal the amount of work leaving the system uh, plus the amount of heat leaving the system. So all the energy in has got to equal all of the energy out. We'll solve for the net amount of work leaving the system, simply the difference between Q in and Q out. So on our diagram, Q in occurs between steps 2 and 3, and if we drew it on the PV diagram, here was Q in between 2 and 3, and Q out occurs between 4 and 1. So here is, I'll draw Q leaving the system in this case. And in a real engine, this would be expelled as exhaust.
And because both of those occur at constant volume, Qn is instantaneous, the volume doesn't change, we can figure out the amount of heat entering the system is simply the increase in its internal energy, or it's uh, Cv times the difference in temperature uh, between state 3 and state 2. And Q out is equal to Cv times the difference in temperature between state 4 and state 1. So we do know T3, it's the maximum temperature of 3460 Rankine. And we do know T1, it's the temperature of air being drawn into the system. But we don't know T2 and we don't know T4. So we don't know the temperature at this location at point 2 and we don't know the temperature at this location or this position at state 4. But we do know that this is a, uh, an isentropic compression between 1 and 2 and that allows us to use a relationship to calculate the temperature at point 2 based on the temperature at point 1. And we do know that this is uh, between states 3 and 4, we do know that this is an isentropic expansion between 3 and 4, so we've got a relationship now to calculate the temperature at 4 based on the temperature at 3. So here's a relationship between T2 and T1, it's this um, isentropic compression, and we set delta S equal to 0, and if it's an ideal gas we can use this relationship, and if I plug in numbers I get a temperature, a hotter temperature of T2 for a thousand, a temperature of 1070 degrees Rankine. So we now know T2, and similarly I can write an expression for T, T4 based on T3, and if I plug in uh, values for T4 I come up with a temperature of 1820 degrees Rankine. Now incidentally this ratio, this 1 over 0.2 and this value of 0.2 is based on the fact that the volume at state 2 is only 20% of the volume at state 1, which was specified in the problem statement. So this value we can say V2 is equal to 0 0.2 V1. The ratio of these, I'm left with 0.2 in that expression. So I now know T4 and T1. Uh, substituting these in, uh, Q in and Q out, I come up with this expression. I'll plug numbers in for these four temperatures and the heat capacity constant volume. And what I come up with is the net amount of work leaving the system is 193 BTUs per pound mass of, of uh, gas that's within the cylinder. So we've got something that looks like um, energy per unit mass. What we really want is the total amount of power that this energy, uh, this engine is generating. So we want the power in horsepower. So one thing we need to figure out is the mass of gas within the engine itself. And we need to know the rate at which um, cycles are, or power cycles are being generated. So if we take the, the rate at which power cycles are occurring and we know the mass within there, we can figure out the actual power of the engine in horsepower. So let's figure out the mass in, of air, air gas in the system itself. We can just use the ideal gas relationship, M is PV over RT, where V now is the total displacement of the engine, so the total amount of air that the engine would draw in per cycle, so it includes the volume of all four cylinders, and the temperature is the temperature at which the air is being drawn in, so we can just call that T1. And we want to figure out the volume of this. The volume of the whole engine is equal to the number of cylinders times the displaced volume in each cylinder, which is pi over 4 times the bore of, the uh, of each cylinder squared times its stroke. And that's simply the volume, if we scroll back up, it's simply the volume that the piston, uh, when it draws, uh, for example, in a four cycle engine, the, the intake stroke is, or the amount of air that is drawn in during the intake is simply the volume uh, of the displacement here and that's equal the uh, height of the cylinder, the stroke, multiplied by the bore which is the diameter of the cylinder. So we're going to take this volume and multiply it by 4 and that's the total volume of air that's drawn in each time the crankshaft uh, completes uh, its so plugging in numbers, here's the bore 3 inches and the stroke of 4 inches, I come up with a volume of 0.065 cubic feet, and that's equal to 1.8 liters, which is a pretty typical displacement for a four-cylinder engine. A lot of Volkswagens, for example, would use uh, a displacement of 1.8 liters. So if I plug in the volume here and the pressures and the temperatures that we're interested in, along with the ideal gas constant, I come up with a mass of uh, gas that's drawn in by the engine um, during each uh, cycle is 0 0.006 uh, pound mass. So now that we know the mass of um, air within the cylinder, we can calculate the rate, the net rate at which work is being done. And that's equal to the number, let's say the number of rotations per per minute, so we know there's 3500 revolutions per minute, 60 seconds per minute, so here's the revolutions per second, and 
in a four cycle engine there's only one power cycle for every two revolutions so we multiply this by uh, for every cycle uh, thermodynamic cycle the engine goes through two revolutions and then here's the value the net amount of work generated per cycle so uh, 193 BTUs per pound mass and then here's the amount of um, air within that's drawn in by the engine during each um, intake cycle so we multiply this through we get um, and check off units we do get uh, uh, units or dimensions of power BTUs per second what we're really interested in is the power output and horsepower so we multiply it by this conversion factor, 1.4 BTU or horsepower per BTU per second. So these would cancel out, and we're left with a value: the net amount of work, the rate, the net rate at which work is being done, is about equal to 50 horsepower. And this gives you an idea: uh, engines are rated. Uh, this size engine would be rated at a max uh, power output much greater than 50 horsepower. But if you're cruising down the road at uh, uh, and a, uh, if you're just cruising down the road under these conditions, you, you might generate a power of about 50 horsepower.